Artificial intelligence has incredible potential and it's already impacting the lives of billions of people around the world on a daily basis. But how can we ensure that this impact remains positive? Who should set those standards? Should government be a part of it? And can AI help um, strengthen government and other institutions that are an important part of our modern world? Welcome back to Impact with AI. I'm your host, Brandon Andrews. Excited to dive into another conversation about artificial intelligence and sustainable development. The country of Rwanda has been a leader in AI governance, releasing a national AI policy in 2023 and hosting a range of global AI convenings, talking about sustainable AI, beneficial AI, responsible AI, and how AI is impacting people on a daily basis. Today, I'm joined by Esther Kunda, Director General Innovation and Emerging Technologies at the Ministry of ICT and Innovation in the Government of Rwanda. She's been at the center of many of these conversations and the progress that's been made. I'll be talking with Esther about a range of SDGs, but in particular, SDG 16, uh, Peace, Government, and Strong Institutions. Esther, thanks so much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit more about your role and the impact that you're making. Thank you very much, Brandon. Um, and as you rightly introduced me, um, I'm in charge of innovation um, and emerging technology within the Ministry of ICT and uh, innovation in the government of Rwanda. Um, one of the key things that we do focus on as a government is um, is policy making, but also supporting uh, the growth of our. Uh, ecosystem at large. Mm -hmm. My day-to-day -day role, um, especially within AI, is to really uh, look at uh, the policy environment and then also steer uh, the growth of our ecosystem. So for the last um, four to five years, uh, the government has been focusing on, um, on AI and trying to understand how does that apply um, to Rwanda as a, as a nation and how would that benefit um, our citizens. Mm -hmm. And if I could take you back a couple of years back, uh, sure. for more than 20, 20 years now, uh, Rwanda decided that uh, digital transformation is going to be one of the cornerstone of our um, economic development. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of work in terms of investing in uh, connectivity for our population, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that we have um, a, fiber, a fiber backbone across the country. Um, and driving uh, digitization of the government in itself with various systems. And that has ushered us in this new era of now understanding how does AI um, now come to augment or even support uh, that economic growth. So two years ago, then we, uh, we mm -hmm. started working on a, on a national policy. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea really is to help us understand how does AI and how can what kind of initiative can we put in place um, in terms of uh, skilling uh, our population and how do we create employment within AI? Mm -hmm. How do we think about compute and other types of infrastructure for AI? How do we think about data um, and how can we accelerate adoption um, and create a private sector around that? Mm -hmm. And lastly, of course, thinking about responsible and ethical AI um, for for Rwanda. Yeah, I remember reading in the national AI policy that uh, Rwanda wants to be the leader on the continent of Africa when it comes to responsible AI, in addition to being the AI lab for the continent. And so definitely big goals, but it sounds like the work that's been done decades ago before the big AI revolution that we've seen in recent years, um, ensuring that there's digital access and connectivity um, is really setting up Rwanda to be able to actually reach those goals um, if, if it hasn't already. So definitely kudos to you uh, and, and your team, as well as the the broader government. Um, I visited Kigali uh, a couple years ago, and so I've seen firsthand um, uh, how beautiful uh, the, the, the country is, but also how connected it is um, and the significant development that's that's happened there. Really enjoyed my trip. I'm a I'm a runner, uh, and so you have these really wide sidewalks uh, in in Kigali, which is great for running. But you also have these really big hills in Kigali that made me reconsider being a runner 
I remember about uh, about a mile and a half into my run, I was like, why am I yeah. doing this? And <laughs> what am I trying to prove? Uh, but it's but it's, it's such a beautiful place and, and so great that uh, you all have committed to being not just a leader yeah. for the yeah. continent, but, but but being really a global leader. And so let's continue the conversation and talk about yeah. AI and, and the SDGs. What what kind of progress have you seen made with artificial intelligence and, and thinking broadly? How can it uh, impact the SDGs? I think when we think about SDGs, uh, uh, one, um, a couple of years back, there was a, a doom and gloom conversation globally on how yeah. SDGs were not going to be able to to achieve them. But I think for us, when we think about, uh, for example, our approach on developing the, the AI policy mm-hmm. was to also deep dive on the economic impact of um, of AI for, for us and, mm-hmm. and what that looks like and what kind of innovation infrastructure um, do we put in place. And that's why even um, in conjunction with the policy in itself, we just added um, we just added a deep dive understanding of what is the economic impact. Now it has changed. That was like three, three years ago. And we were looking at about 6% in terms of economic value. Um, that was mostly uh, looking at key sectors like agriculture, health, mm-hmm. um, health, and as well as um, public sector. Um, but now with generative AI, we can now rethink even that uh, economic impact um, uh, to to even uh, much higher because now you're looking at more sectors improving more productivity, etc. Mm-hmm. Some other elements that we were also looking at included, um, for example, since 2018, we've had a very strong um, emphasis on developing Kinyarwanda uh, data sets uh, mm-hmm. to be used on AI. Mm-hmm. So uh, between until recently, like between 2018 and 2019, we developed one of the largest data sets, voice data sets for Kinyarwanda, our mm-hmm. local language, mm-hmm. um, for it to become the second language with the largest data sets in the world after English. Wow. So you can Im- So you can imagine for us thinking that when you're thinking about culture, when you're thinking about preserving um, your identity as, mm-hmm. as, a, as, a, as a country, your language is the first thing that you will think about. Yeah. But also it's a way to think about inclusiveness when AI solutions are being deployed mm-hmm. to ensure that if government has adopted an AI solution and it's providing a service to citizens, mm-hmm. citizens don't need to learn foreign languages to access those services. Yeah. Um, it's it's very, very accessible. Um, something else that we've also looked yeah, at I is, just, is... I could just pause right there. I think ahead. that's a really important point to underscore because so many of the original kind of bedrock AI uh, developments have happened in the U.S. with Google tra- um, creating the transformer model. And then we've seen, you know, China with deep seek and and distillation and some other advances so advances are happening around the world and it's important that as we talk about accessibility that people have access to whatever tools in their native language and um, so you're not having to translate from another language and maybe things get lost in translation or the service is slowed down or to the point that you're making you're making burdening uh, people around the world with having to learn a different language in order to access technology that could potentially be helpful to them. And so I think it's incredibly important that Rwanda has taken this step to um, create these data sets um, and to preserve their native languages to ensure that the folks have access. Uh, I think it's a really important step. And so again, kudos to you and the team for for doing that. And as we're thinking about the sustainable development goals, nearly a third, maybe more of the SDG targets. Uh, so the actual tasks, the actual goals that are there um, to help achieve the broader, you know, big SDG goals, um, they literally can't be tracked because there's no data. Either the countries exactly. don't have access to the data or the data isn't clean, as you mentioned, so it can't be used. And so taking those steps to create those data sets can certainly have a significant positive impact across the SDGs. But please continue. 
Um, actually, uh, you just brought up a, a very, very good um, point. Maybe let me make a point, two points based on that mm -hmm. um, addition you just added. Apart from Kenya Rwanda, there's uh, several companies, including some here in Rwanda, other communities across Africa and other countries that are really focusing on um, on on language on african languages mm -hmm. so we've seen several um uh, like for example kiswahili um yoruba i believe or Igbo, uh mm -hmm. shona um in, in languages in ethiopia um there's really a lot of there's a very big community that is working very hard to unlock that mm -hmm. and i think for most of us how we look at this is uh, we look at these languages and these models as public assets. And so for us, what we've, uh, we're trying to build is a strong testing ground through sandboxes to mm -hmm. ensure that we, um, to ensure that, uh, at policy making at the, within government, we are building those, uh, technology and, uh, uh capabilities, uh, as we go. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And that is really entrepreneurship you acting, applying the principles of entrepreneurship internally within government uh, to create space for innovation and ensure that, yes, government has oversight, but that these technologies can continue to grow and have the space that they need uh, to be able to, 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 to innovate and hopefully, again, drive that positive impact forward. So, Esther, thanks again for your time today. Last question, and this is the big one. So many of the SDGs are behind. Do you think AI can rescue the sustainable development goals and get them on track? Um, I cannot be definitive around it because, mm -hmm. for example, if we have to reach the SDG around water, the basic principle is to actually get water to everyone. So yeah. some of this, we, we would not have... We, uh, um, we cannot use AI to go around the need to build the right infrastructure for mm -hmm. everyone. But I think what AI is going to help us um, with is one, as we started talking about, um, is is the need to, to design uh, solutions that could accelerate uh, how we get to those, um, mm -hmm. how we get to, to, to those uh, uh, SDGs. A very quick example again to our health sector, what we used recently, and, and as well as even on our connectivity e example, we used this. We worked with a company that is able to use satellite imagery to, and and they have a model where they they could design. Um, what they looked at was two things: one, in the health, we wanted to to model a point where every Rwandan should not walk more than 30 minutes to access health services. Mm -hmm. And the second one, we were also looking at connectivity gaps across the country. So what this uh, solution, what this company did for us is to map out places where we needed to put health centers, where we needed to put health posts, and where we need to put um, towers, connectivity towers. Mm -hmm. So now we have all that, and uh, we have the, we have the financing, and we now know how many towers we need to have, a hundred percent geographical connectivity across Rwanda. We have um, the number of health posts we need to put across Rwanda so that every Rwandan citizen will be within thirty minutes of a health post, mm -hmm. and we know how much money it's going to cost us. But I don't think AI is going to build those health posts, right? Yeah. But now, but now we have a very specific goal and we are very clear that if we solve this, then it's, we're going now to start looking at what is the quality of service that they're getting. But we will know we would have solved how much a random can walk uh, mm -hmm. to get to a particular service. We would have solved a uh, um, connectivity issue across the country. So I mm -hmm. think this is how we, we have to think about AI, that, uh, that uh, more, some of the SDGs are really infrastructure heavy. Yeah. But I think it, it can help us say that within the next one year, if we're very dedicated, we could have scoped out the full the full length of the the, the issues mm -hmm. and where we are and shown us the gap 
and shown us what is actually required to do this. And then we go ahead and do it, uh, go ahead and do it. But uh, yeah, so that's my thought around this. All right. No, and that's a great practical uh, answer to the question. I think absolutely artificial intelligence can accelerate uh, progress towards some of the goals, but you're right. We don't have uh, robots yet that are going to build the brick and mortar pieces. Uh, and also a lot of the SDGs, I think, are reliant on um, government and institutions, even private sector, making active choices and changes, relying on individuals making active changes. And, and certainly AI can't force people to do those things, even if the technology is there to potentially support some of the goals, but certainly progress can be made. Well, Esther, again, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today. Thank you also for the incredible work that you and your team are doing in Kigali. Um, as we close, how can people get in contact with you, learn more about the work that you're doing? Are there any projects that could use support that uh, the audience might be able to connect with? Um, definitely reach out. I think we're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, but also our ministry website, the Ministry mm -hmm. of ICT, which is um, minic m i n i c t dot gov dot r w. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's our website, and you can talk to us anytime. I'm on all social media platforms uh, if you want to talk directly. And as Rhonda, I think we we welcome and are working towards. Um, asking investors to to come to Rwanda. I think the big mm -hmm. question we have now is um, how do we avail compute infrastructure for our innovation ecosystem? Mm -hmm. But also we have very, very big um, questions on agriculture, in education, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and in building these um, auditing systems, talent skilling is a very big uh, component. So we are trying to get as many partners as possible are providing skilling at different levels, whether it's reskilling people, upskilling hmm. uh, people, but also traditional research um, and um, research um, activities. Happy to talk to people who are making impact in those areas. Great. Well, sounds like some great touch points to potentially do some positive work together. Well, thanks everyone again for joining us for this edition of Impact with AI. If you'd like to see more of these conversations, visit impactwithai.media or subscribe to our playlist on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.